Hey there, everybody. Good morning. It's almost time for seven minutes in the morning, but I, I have a helper joining me this morning. And me. What are you going to say? Hi. All right, here we go. Time for seven minutes. If I can get my finger around here, time for seven minutes in the morning. This is 7 Minutes in the Morning, where five days a week, you get tips and hacks dedicated to helping business owners and leaders just like you find and break through the one thing that is preventing your success. And now, here's the host of 7 Minutes in the Morning and your results coach, Tom Rigsby. Hey there, everybody, and we're back. This is 7 Minutes in the Morning. Oh, man. It's all jacked up on Mountain Dew. Okay, and we're back. <laughs> yeah, she's awesome. That was, uh, for those of you who don't know, that's the old grand, the old, the oldest granddaughter, Lindley. She comes over every Friday morning and Friday afternoon to spend time with Nan. And I just happened to be here this morning, so it worked out. All right, so uh, good morning. Welcome. This is 7 Minutes in the Morning. My name is Tom Rigsby. If you have not done so already, I would encourage you, if you use Instagram, follow me on Instagram. There's a lot of interesting stuff going on over there. Like our quote of the day today. It is free coaching Friday, by the way. So if you have a question, a comment, or a topic you would like for me to tackle, put that in the comments, uh, and I will get to those. Also, when you get here, whether you watch live or on the replay, and I say this every day, and I, you know, I want you folks watching the replay to take me up on this. Say hi in the comments. I will answer you. You just have to say hi. That's all. Do what, what Brooke and Catherine have both done. Uh, and say hi. Yeah, Catherine, you're going to have to go watch the replay because Lindley was with me in the opening. So you missed out on that. All right. So, and Keith. Hey, Keith. Um, all right. So if you have a question, comment, or topic you'd like for me to hit, go ahead and put that in the comments. In the meantime, I'm going to talk about the quote of the day, which is from one of my favorite people, Robert Kiyosaki. And he says, uh, don't let the fear of losing be greater than the excitement of winning. And actually, it's kind of funny. In, in preparing for the show, uh, and actually, let me see if I can do this real quick while we are, uh, while we're talking. In prepping for the show, I, um, I, I put the quote up here on the screen and it's got a, you know, it's got a cute little picture with it. And, uh, so Lindley was looking at the picture and then just, Kind of read the uh, read the quote for me. Yeah, we'll replace it. All right. So now that I've got that, I can bring it right over here and share it with you guys. So, oops, I'll go this way. There was our quote. There is our quote of the day. It's going to show up on Instagram. Hey, Abby. Good morning. Don't let the. But anyway, so that was up on the screen. She came in and read it, and so we had a chance to talk about it for a minute. And so, what does that mean? And, and all that. She got it. Got it. Gosh, she's smart. Don't let the fear of losing be greater than the fear of excitement. Sometimes the, <clears throat> sometimes the fear of what could go wrong. We spend so much time in our head about what could go wrong and not about what could go right that we let the fear of losing override that excitement because because we're living in that fear we're not living in that excitement so that's one of the reasons why i encourage uh, my coaching clients to think about the positive outcome think about what if if everything goes right what's the best possible outcome spend some time in that what then don't just describe it describe how you feel where you are when you get the news how that makes you feel, sight, sound, smells, tastes, how you'll celebrate, all those things. Spend some time in that. We do the equivalent when we think about what could go wrong, so why not spend some time thinking about what could go right? Right? Right. Okay. All right. So Keith's got a question here. We'll throw that one out. Hey, Joe, good morning. Yes, uh, Catherine, perspective does make all the difference. 
All right, Keith's question. Are there any business circumstances where you think it's okay for the business plan to be for the business to stay at its current level rather than trying to constantly grow? Mm, mm, generally, yes. Uh, and, and this is a... Um, this is it's an interesting question because we're kind of taught that we want the business to grow. Um, but there is a point in the life cycle of a business where it is, it is achieving the goals of the business owner. And in, in that life cycle stage, we call that stage sustainment. Once the business gets to that sustaining place, the, there's no compelling need to keep growing the business except, and this is why I say generally I agree, or, or generally I would say yes, except that you're going to have customer churn, right? So you, the, you should just expect to lose customers at a predictable rate uh, over time. Now, if you just want the business to long tail out and when all the customers are gone, the business is gone, then okay. Don't worry about maintaining that new customer flow. But if you want to maintain a level, which I think was your question, you got it at its current level and you want to keep it there, then you have to have some plans for replacing the churn. Okay. You don't have to, you don't have to have plans to grow, you know, five, ten percent every year, but you do have to replace those customers that, that just naturally fall off. And there will always be some that just naturally fall off. Well, and yeah, so so Joe's got a point. Um uh, yeah, so actually, Brooke, that's how I use it. When I'm helping um so Brooks' comment was a sustainment phase could also be a planned time to save and plan for growth. That's how I encourage business owners to think about it. Because you go from a startup phase through the grind into this sustain mode. Well, now your next growth cycle necessarily has to come back around and repeat that startup mode. Because you're either starting up a new product, a new location, a new sales channel and i mean you're doing some kind of startup again then you go back through the grind again then you get to sustain and the, every time you land in that sustained cycle that sustained phase you have to make a decision about are you going to go back around through the growth again or are you going to loop out the other way and just let it play out now um so that's kind of the repeating and and I like it that way because right now I might think I want to go through, you know, 27 growth cycles, but after I get through 7 I might say, no, actually I'm I'm pretty happy with this business where it is. I'm going to let it long tail. Now, to Joe's comment, which is um the danger in doing what you're talking about, Keith. Uh, when you become um, satisfied, placated, uh, I don't know the right word to use here. When you become satisfied with where you are and you stop aggressively trying to maintain the business, there is a huge opportunity for someone else to displace you. Now, in the case of Blockbuster, there was a huge disruption also in that, that new technology came and made their planned model obsolete. And, you know, if you, if you subscribe to Moore's law, <coughs> Moore says that technology is it now I've forgotten how exactly how it goes. What is Moore's law? Somebody help me out there, but that it doubles uh, on a regular basis. Let's see. We'll look it up here real quick. Moore's law asserts that the number, well, uh, yeah, 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 yeah. That's about transistors. Every two years, the, the number of transistors on a microchip double about every two years, and the cost is cut in half. So every time it doubles, it cuts in half. So technology is going to continue to advance, and there's always a chance that that new technology disrupts your, your stability, 
right? So once you get to that stability phase, a disruption in the market could, in and of itself, throw you out of that stability mode. So maybe you have to be intentional, whatever your plan for the business, that would be a hold, forward, or fold. Yep, I agree with that. And there's always a sweet spot for profitability. Agreed. You should always stay aware of the market and opportunities to sustain at a different level. Double, yeah. Yeah, so I, I agree with both of those. There is a sweet spot, and it's going to fluctuate a little bit. Again, it really depends on what the, the long-term outcome is. Oh, bring it back around to that. We've talked about this all week. Um, but almost every business, now Blockbuster actually is a great example of a business that didn't have an opportunity to long tail. I mean, their their business, the delivery the, the, the technological disruption broke their delivery system. So much so that even, I mean, there are still DVD rental places, right? Except now they're, it's Redbox. It's a, it's a kiosk, an automated vending machine outside the store, right? Um, so there's always room for disruption. You have to be cautious that that disruption doesn't displace you. But if you've got a cash cow product and you just want to let it run out, disruptions, you know, do whatever, then that's possible. All right. Look at that. How long we've we been going today? 11 minutes. Man, you guys are awesome. It's Friday. You guys have a great weekend. I will thank you so much for being here. Remember, if you got value from this, give it a like, give it a hearts up, give it a positive comment, whatever's appropriate in the venue where you're watching. And only if you got value from it, share it with your network. Help us get the message out to more people. I'm going to wish you a great weekend, and I will plan on talking to you again on Monday. Till then, you guys take care. Ah, hit the right button, Tom.